Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another edition of the Habits for Small Business, where you can find us on the internet at habitsforsmallbusiness.com. You can send us an email at abbotsfordsmallbusiness at gmail.com. You can phone if you're in the Vancouver area. That means if you're out of the Fraser Valley area, give us a call on our Magic Jack phone number. That way you don't have to pay any long distance charges. And that phone number is 778-800-0246. If you are inside the Fraser Valley, give us a call on my private, not so private cell number, 778-908-5759. Now, now, tomorrow, I am about to go on an exciting adventure. I have a good friend. Her, her name is Yvette Eastman, and she owns a business called Touchpoint Reflexology. Now, Yvette is 70-some-odd years old. I think she's 73, and she's got a good website, and I've got her blogging now because I, I love to teach people how to blog and podcast their business. That's, that's a passion of mine, and, of course, that's the reason for this show. And tomorrow I'm going to go over there and set up some equipment and she is going to be teaching a class of uh, several students and uh, what she's about to do is going to flip her business right over on its head. She's going to teach a series of reflexology students that I think have gone through a diploma course. Uh, Yvette used to have a, a own a reflexology or holistic health college. So she was recognized by the government. So she's been doing that for quite a number of years. But because there's been some changes in the BC legislature for um, reflexology schools, it has made it uh, quite difficult for her to continue. So she's decided, by my suggestion, to take her courses, combine them. She's been at this business for over 30 years. She's written over 10 books. And uh, I wanted to combine them and put together an online college course for reflexologists because a lot of people, they have to travel to her office to take the training. They can't get off of work. It's, the logistics are, are, are horrible. It's a nightmare. So I suggested to Yvette that why don't you make a series of videos. You've already got 10 books, so take the, the creme de la creme of all of your 10 books. Put it in two or three really, really good books and form a college course on teaching people how to, uh, how to do reflexology over the internet. It's uh, online learning. A lot of people are doing it. As a matter of fact, uh, you can now get an entire education online. You don't even have to put step foot in a classroom anymore. So today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the, the equipment, how so very easy it is to, uh, to podcast or video blog someone that wants to do this. And I want to do this because it is your business and for dirt cheap, and I mean dirt cheap, you can blog and uh, podcast either audio or and video about your business and put it up on the net uh, on your website or your blog. So I'm going to go through a collection of equipment here, and you know, over the years, it's just, it's shameful <laughs> how much equipment I have acquired over the years. Yes, I've been doing this this concept for a couple of years, and yes, I, you know, if I see a, a nice good bit of equipment, I'll, uh, I'll latch onto it, but when I take a look at all the equipment, I've got enough to invite, I don't know, I would say six to eight people over to my home and teach them I've got enough equipment to teach them the the, the dirt cheap, like just the, the plain basics on a uh, an iPod, uh, up to a sophisticated uh, bunch of machinery and how to do the whole gambit. I've got everything in between. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to take, what 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 your what the possibilities are. What I'm going to take to her, I've, I've got a little a go kit, what I call a go kit down here on my right hand side, and it's packed in a suitcase. And then I will show you the other things that, and how easy it is for you to start podcasting about your company. Let's start out first with the all-time wonderful, and this is a couple of years old, and it still works like a charm, the, um, the iPod 120 gig classic. And the reason it works is because I don't abuse it. I always put my electronics in a really good package, uh, a rubber package if I can. And this has just been a steadfast machine. 120 gigs, that's a lot if you're doing audio. Um, what you can do is, and remember now, this is digital. Th- make no mistake, this is professional quality. This is all completely digital. So you can take this machine, and you know when you get a, uh, a cell phone, any kind of a cell phone nowadays, whether it's a feature phone or a smartphone, they all come with a harness with uh, a microphone 
and uh, earbuds, and this part simply plugs into the iPod. Well, you can take this particular machine, plug it in there. It has a feature where it has, uh, you can go to a microphone, it's right, right there, it's called Voice Memos, and you can actually record an entire audio podcast for your business with this. Nothing, nothing more than this. That's it. Um, and the reason I, and I say this is because all, a lot of you have the older machines, the, the older iPods kicking around at home, uh, they go right up to 160 gigs, the classics. But don't throw these machines away. They are extremely useful. They are digital. This is a serious business machine, a serial, a serious audio um, um, recording device. So I'm going to put that one over to the right-hand side. Now, we're going to be vi revisiting these headsets again because they're so good. How many of you out there have an iPod Touch? I do. I bought it <laughs> with points from my super sa my save on foods <laughs> adventures. So I saved up and saved up and saved up enough points to the groceries. And it took me, I don't know, I, I think maybe a year, year and a half, to afford an 8 gig iPod touch. Now, same thing applies, same rule applies. So, so this was virtually free, right? And when I got my, when I got my phone, my cell phone, my smartphone, all these come and to face it I mean if you have a spouse and or kids and they have cell phones you've got a couple of pairs of these um, kicking around a couple of pairs of these headsets right so make no mistake again you can take this particular one put it in there now you've got a voice recording device and this will hold a lot of audio trust me so all you need to podcast about your business in, uh, in audio format is either an iPod classic which is uh, a couple of years old now, but works fine, or an iPod Touch. So let's continue on. These are just, if you had that, you wouldn't have to upgrade for a couple of years if all you wanted to do was audio. They're just fantastic. You can take them out into the field. You can put, put it, they, put in, they go in the pocket. It's so easy. If you want to interview anybody for your business, say, for example, you are in the tire business. You sell tires. And you know someone that, that sells mags, or you know someone that sells a tire dressing, like a gel tire dressing, and you happen to meet them, and you say, hey, listen, do you, want, do you mind if I interview you? And uh, make an appointment to go down to their business, take your iPod, take your little headset, because the microphone on these are extremely good, and just hold the microphone out there and, and go back and forth and say, you know, tell me, Tom, what about this wonderful gel you're selling? Podcast about complementary services within your niche. What that does is it adds uh, incredible extra value to your podcast shows, and we will be giving you a lot more uh, education th in that era. Let's go on. Now, a couple of years ago, I also bought the Flip Cam. Remember the Flip Cam? They were all the rage, and I mean all the rage. I forget even how you... Oh, yeah. It just flips open here, and you've got a USB. You can just plug it into any USB cable. These are really, really good. As a matter of fact, there was a fellow by the name of Jim Kukro. He went on the Internet and he made himself a deal. He was going to talk about something about his business for 30 days on the flip cam and then upload it to the Internet. And he did that. Guess what happened? Not only did he get into the business of selling flip cams, and he made quite a bit of money selling the flip cam off of his website as an affiliate, but after uh, a couple of... Uh, publishers saw his work they offered him book deals now he's a published author and he attributes his success to nothing more than the flip cam so and this is really really inexpensive i mean i don't know how much they are now i haven't i haven't paid one or picked one up for a long time i know my vado now you can get for about seventy dollars which is which is dirt cheap audio quality on these not that great. So what you can do, and I'll be doing this in, in future, is you can record the audio on here and record the video on here and then sync them. There are uh, um, free software programs where you can sync and really, really good audio from this guy with the iPod. And then you can get, you know, 640 by 480 video out of the flip camp. Very, very acceptable for the Internet. So next up on my, my little my little treasure trove here <laughs> is the Vado. And I must tell you, this is a high-def cam, and I use it almost everywhere. Here's the thing. If you're 
not ready to put yourself on video yet, that's okay. If you want a podcast about something that, that um, involves a camera and you can put audio in later, for example, you can put m music in later or you can, you can narrate later on by just getting the video first and then narrating later, you can always do that as well. And there's a, a free program called Audacity that you can download and it is extremely powerful. I can't believe all these free programs out there for people. Um, I'm enjoying a book called 101 Free Marketing Tips, uh, an ebook. I bought it. It's an audiobook actually. And I am, it, just tons of stuff. So, so we've got the Vado camera, and this is probably one of my favorite camera, pocket cameras out in the field. I live and die by this camera. I mean, how high can you go higher than high def right now, right? You, you can't. Okay. <clears throat> now, this one doesn't come with any kind of a, a audio jack. Now, I'm told they can come with an upward video. Okay, so now let's move on to I, this is a, um, this is a Motorola Atrix Superphone. It has a camera here and a camera here. And, uh, the audio on this would be exceptional. Again, take your headset, plug it in, and hit the record button. There's lots of free record apps. Don't forget, this is a very serious, professional quality um, audio device. You can also shoot video off of here, and uh, it is quite acceptable. Yeah, I would say that it was up to past the standards of this, and in between that and the high def that you can get from the Vado camera. I do mostly audio. If I'm out in the field and I need to uh, interview someone, I, I always have a headset with me because I listen to audiobooks wherever I go. And if I have an opportunity to interview someone on the field, I will use that headset with this particular superphone and record their voice. And uh, it's it's fantastic. So that is that covers the superphone or any cell phone, any smartphone will do it. When I look around my server cabinets up there, I saw a camera that I hadn't that I didn't realize that I had for a couple of years. This is called the Orbit by Logitech. Now, I really, really love Logitech products. This little camera, can it's USB-based, and it's got quite a quite a long cord. I, I'm surprised at the, the length of the cord. See that? <laughs> I'm still... So, wow, I'll bet you that cord's 10, 12 feet. So, all you do is you plug it in, you, get, you download the software, and this can be hooked up to any notebook computer or desktop computers as well. Um, this is, I'm going to have to, I haven't plugged this in for two years, so I'm not sure whether, I can't remember whether it does high def or not. It will do close to high def. As a matter of fact, when you're on the internet, 640 by 480 is just fine. So this little camera can go with you in a kit and, uh, and record the video quite nicely. Okay, I won this. I mean, come on, how many times have you gone out someplace either you've won it or you've been given it or you've just had it, you bought it or somebody else bought it, you get, got a video camera for Christmas and you just put it away in the closet and never thought about it again. Do not, I repeat again, do not throw these video cameras away. This video camera does not have an external microphone jack. That comes in the more expensive models. But it does do an adequate job of audio. And uh, if you're serious about getting into podcasting, really all you need is one of these. And then if you want to record the audio again on one of these, if you want to bring your audio up, that's fine. But you can clean up your audio as well. There's some camera tricks that I'm going to show you as well on future shows where you can get closer to your subject and then clean it up with Audacity. Audacity can save you time and trouble, I guarantee you. So when you go and look for a... Um, uh, a, a, a camcorder nowadays look for a higher quality camcorder that has a uh, microphone out and I'm going to show you that one in just a minute by the way the, the camera that you're watching me on right now is from Logitech it's called the Logitech Pro 9000 and it costs about $129 I think you can get them for probably around $99 now it's high def and when I go places, when I go um, uh, to do a remote video, I will take this. I've, I've zap strapped it actually onto a, uh, a, a tripod so I can adjust the height quite easily. Because quite often, if you just have it hooked up to the computer, the computer monitor right here, you don't get a lot of depth. You can't really get two people. And so if it's on a, if it's on a tripod, you can control field of depth a lot more. 
The next one is a microphone from um, a company called Blue, and this is called the Snowball, and it is a, a USB microphone. You have the USB jack in the back, and it just plugs into any notebook computer or any desktop computer, PC or Mac. And I didn't have to load a darn thing. I didn't have to load any software drivers at all on this. It has a built-in software driver when you plug it in. And that's all. These microphones work extremely well. This microphone I got for $99, and they're holding their value quite well. I went down to uh, Staples the other day, and they had, a, they had a, cl a clearance bin, and they were selling these for $99 still. And this is a year and a half, two years later. Uh, you can pick these up now on the Internet for $69. So, for example, if you wanted to get this guy, and I think you can probably pick up an Orbit for, oh, I don't know, 80 bucks and $70, $150, and, and you're in. You know, you've got a USB microphone and a USB camera. If you want, can go USB, I would strongly suggest it because USB is cross-platform. You can hook it up to any PC, any Mac. Also, there's no must, no fuss. You don't have to worry about, do I have the right drivers? Well, for this, you would have to go and download the drivers. But as soon as you see the picture, it's called the Orbit. As soon as you see the picture, then you'll be able to download the drivers. But the Snowball didn't require any drivers at all, unless they uh, they update the firmware, um, which they don't do very often. The last one on here, before I, I show you my go bag, is a JVC. Now, the, this JVC is a high-def camera, and it does indeed have a microphone out and I'm extremely pleased with this camera. This is a beautiful camera. Now, in the future, I am going to be getting what's called a um, Juiced Link Box. Now, what is a Juiced Link Box? Juiced Link Box is a box that fits just underneath the camera. And what it does is it has a little wire that goes up to the microphone wire. And it has a preamp in it, so you can use professional quality microphones like this microphone here and the microphone that I'm talking into. These microphones are what they call XLR. And if you take a look behind me here, my uh, my soundboard, my soundboard on the left-hand side, the top left-hand side, they have four XLRs. XLRs are the big, thick cables that go in there. And, and now you're into very high-quality broadcast, studio-quality uh, microphones. So... This is later on when you start to do serious podcasting and you want a consistent product all the time. Uh, but remember, remember where we started out? Started out with 120 gig iPod Classic. It's just incredible. You can get great audio from this. By the way, I have, I also have a, uh, I can't find it right now. It's in my big suitcase. It's a digital recorder from Sony and I paid $80 for it a year, year and a half ago. And it's pure digital. It, it runs off a of flash drive, and I can hook, I can hook this guy, this headset up to it, and it records a fantastic sound, CD quality. All you need is CD quality, and you're golden for for audio. So I wanted to show you that little recording device. It's, it's about this small. It's about if you cut this in half, if you cut my iPod Touch in half, that's about the size of the the little C, Sony CD uh, digital recorder. And you know, once you, I mean, you have eighty dollar digital recorder. That's all you need for audio. That is it. You don't have to upgrade for years. People think I got to get the latest, greatest. I tell you what, that that uh, little digital recorder cost seventy nine dollars, and this cost what seven hundred and ninety nine dollars. Yes, if you want to get a camera later on, you can. But you know, there are other choices. You know, there are there are lots of other choices. Remember your super phone as well. So here we go. We're going to get. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold the, the suitcase up to the camera so you can take a look. I'm going to tip it sideways a little bit, so just hang on. I'll get the microphone out of the way. I'll bring each individual item out for you and show you. This is what I call my go kit. This is my my kit when I do an audio podcast and a video podcast. I take this camera that you're looking at, 
the Logitech Pro 9000. Great camera. This is my favorite microphone, and I'll, and I'll tell you why it's my favorite. These are beautiful. These are uh, Audio Technica 2050 ATs, and I've and I've designed a custom um, pop filter over top of this. But the reason that this one is so much better is because it's it's a versatility. This particular um, microphone, it's it's retro style, which I really love. And this particular microphone requires an XLR connection, so a professional connection, just like this. And get this, it can also be hooked up by USB. It has a place where you have you control the volume back here in the front here, and then you control the patterns. Now some patterns are all around where you have guests all around the table, and you want to pick up that. You've got that. Other patterns are directly in front of you. You've got that. Another pattern here is directly across and then back. You've got that. Another pattern is just you know very specific areas. I don't know all the patterns. I got uh, one, two, three, four. It has a gain control in the back, which is really, really handy. So you've got two buttons here. Now, it stands up here on its own unique stand, and you, you can certainly use another stand if you want. But I love this stand. It looks good, and and it has on the bottom over here. It has a headphone jack, and this headphone jack has what they call zero latency. Sometimes when you're using a microphone on a computer and you've got your headphones on and then you've got a microphone, there is a a wait. You talk and then you hear an echo uh, very, very quickly about a quarter of a second later. That's called latency. But with this particular microphone, once you use this jack on the headphone, it, it has zero latency. That means it's real time. This microphone is uh, going, and I picked it up at Sears, by the way, for $250. Now, I got now. You're talking, you know, broadcast quality microphone. I got these microphones on a great deal. If you, when I when I originally was looking to buy them, they were selling for four hundred dollars. And I know that that's retail and it's ridiculous. It's a lot of money to spend on a microphone. But when you want quality, it's about the area you should, you should be thinking anywhere from two to four hundred dollars. And I I saw <clears throat> I got a, a certificate or fifty dollars or something for Christmas cash. And I saw this particular microphone on sale for two hundred and fifty dollars. So I had fifty bucks cash from Christmas. So I went into Long and McQuay where I where I get my equipment, plunked down my cash. So our two hundred and fifty dollar microphone with fifty dollars is now you know two hundred dollars. So that was a great deal. And I loved this microphone so much that I went back the week later because I knew I was going to be interviewing guests, and I bought another microphone. So these two microphones are two hundred and fifty dollars a piece, right? So all three microphones are $750. And the reason that I wanted to get a different, slightly different microphone than these ones out in the field is this one's a little bit more rugged. It does USB uh, as well as XLR. It has a retro style look. And when I compared the sound quality, the gain on this one, it, it was a little bit tighter, a little bit clearer, and a little bit more broad than the controls on this one. Now. I have a, uh, I'm going to show you in a moment, I have a soundboard that I put this microphone through. And I'll, and I'll talk about soundboards in future shows as well. But I love this microphone. So when you want to fold it out, when you want to fold it away, you just unloosen these, right? And they just fold flat like that. Th that's handy. It's really, really handy. And I would caution you that if you're going to get a microphone like this, save the styrofoam. If you save the styrofoam, it will it will fit exactly in here. No, I had it right. It will fit exactly in there, right? When you put it away, and that's that's the reason that I saved the styrofoam. Now, did I save the front? No, and it's because there's not enough room when you close the lid. So I'm going to put this back, and I'll get the next piece. Now, what I really value about that microphone that I just put away, the uh, it's called the Yeti Pro, is it has a special XLR cable, and this is the XLR cables on here and here. You'll notice that this one is split, and this particular microphone, the Yeti Pro that I just put away, 
has a, un a unique capacity. It can record in true stereo, but only if you use this kind of uh, harness. So you've got a very interesting five pin female configuration here. They're almost always three pin. And then over here, you've got three pins. So when you, ho when you hook it into a board, a soundboard, you've got to use both of these on the soundboard. And then this end hooks, oh, this end hooks right directly into the microphone. And trust me, it gives such a beautiful sound out in the field. I wanted to make sure that as I was building my business, my podcasting business and my business teaching people how to podcast, that I gave a very consistent uh, look and feel and sound. So that's why I'm investing in XLR, uh, broad studio broadcast equipment uh, products. Now this is really important. This is, a <laughs> this is my flooring, a piece of my flooring here. I did the entire broadcast studio in this. This is a rubber tired material. And you can go down to Costco and get it. What it does is it, it uh, for, for first place, it soundproofs. Second, it warms the floor up. Third, it gives a really beautiful look to the floor, an industrial look. And it goes with uh, the color of the server cabinets and the color that we painted the walls. So when you use a, a microphone like that, it is they, they are so sensitive. The, this is not for home use, by the way, this microphone. The, the Yeti Pro, it's, it's overkill. What you're going to find is you've you've got too much horsepower. If you if you're using it just for home, just for any old microphone, don't get that microphone because it's you have to treat them really a special way. If you're going to have a microphone like that, I would highly suggest that you go and get a um, a, um, a mixing board, a soundboard. So getting back to this, this is a very spongy material. So I use this and then I place the microphone on top. Because when people lean over or when people smack their hand on the desk, you don't want that vibration hitting the microphone because these microphones are quite sensitive and I want these microphones to last for years and years. These are an investment. These are what you know, you're going to build your business with. So I just, um, a couple of years ago, I, I bought a huge Pelican case. Uh, so when I take my equipment around, it's, it's not damaged. You know, Pelican cases are fantastic. And we went on a cruise ship, and, and I took a whole bunch of equipment in that Pelican case, and it just did a great job. And this is foam from the Pelican case, and boy, oh boy, do you get a lot of foam. So I line this, um, I line my go case with the foam from the Pelican case. So that's that's where I, I use the foam from. The next item that I use for my go kit is called a Behringer. Um, Xenix 802 uh, mixer. So here's where it gets really important. This particular mixer is good, and I, I think I paid uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $100 for it. Um, it's a premium 8-input, eight 8-input, eight 2-bus mixer with Xenix Microphone Preamp British Equalizer. So what happens is they have equalizers in this particular uh, mixer, and they have two XLR ports. And this is important because Remember the little dongle that, that I use with my Yeti Pro? Well, these two XLRs go here, and that's what gives you the stereo sound, right? These, these go in here. And then this goes out, this connection goes out to the microphone. And when you have that kind of sophisticated setup, now you've, you, you not only just have a microphone, but the reason that you have to have a mixing board, like the one over my left shoulder here, the Yamaha, is because these microphones will not work if they don't have a what they call phantom power. They need 48 volts of stable power in, in order to work. Once you buy a board that has phantom power, and most of them do now, it will power what they call an XLR microphone. So on this particular board, you've got equalizer settings, you've got mid, low, and high frequency, you've got effects, you've got pan, you've got headphones out. This little board, it really makes this particular microphone shine. It, it really brings out a beautiful quality. I, I hooked it up yesterday, and I was quite impressed with the sound quality. So now, you see, when you start podcasting on a regular basis, and you think, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a regular show on my, on my business, then you want to start thinking of getting equipment like this. And this wasn't bad. This is 100 bucks. And my microphone, the Yeti Pro, is 250 so that's $350. And that really is all you need to start audio. Now, of course, you need a computer as well, but most people have a notebook computer sitting around. 
that they can use for this purpose. So of course we've got the we've got the power supply for the Behringer. I'm not going to bring that out and, and show you, but I will show you this. This is a cable that you're going to need. So this goes from your main amplifier, your your two mains on the um, on the mixing board, and then this feeds the signal on the other end to your computer. So you put it in the microphone end of your computer. Now, once you establish connection with this, now the the mixing board can now talk to the computer. Then you take that dongle right here, and you hook up from the mixing board onto the microphone. Now the the mixing board can talk to the microphone. So now you've got all three. And trust me, when you put all three of these things together, the sound in these microphones are just absolutely amazing. You can get fancier if you want in future shows. I've got picked up um, what they call a pre-tube amplifier. And that means that they have a little tube in them. And I changed them to a Russian tube. The fellow at the Long and McQuaid begged me to change to a Russian tube. And I did. And what it does is it gives these particular microphones a very, very nice, rich, mellow sound. So ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. There is my Go kit. And this is the kit that I will now be taking around to businesses. Very sophisticated. And you know what? N not that not that expensive. So let's review the, the, the microphone $250, the, the Behringer Exilite 802, um, Pro the mixing board is $100. So for $350, that handles the audio. And then I'll be taking, uh, oh, I'll be taking the 9000 the uh, Logitech Pro 9000, but don't forget that you can get one of these little Orbit cams. So this camera you can pick up for a hundred dollars. So we got two fifty, three fifty, four fifty. So for four hundred and fifty dollars, you can pick up an extremely good and effective uh, and efficient audio system and video system. So everything for under five hundred dollars, and then you hook it up to a, a notebook computer or a desktop computer, and you're away. That now you're into broadcast quality for $450. You're into broadcast quality sound and picture. So I just wanted to share with you some of the things because I know that all of us tend to be hoarders a little bit and we have a lot of electronic gadgets sitting around. And um, I would, I'm just enjoying the book 101 Free Ways to Market Your Company for Free or Nearly Free. And his son started with just a little flip camera, and now he's got a thriving business going. And, and remember now, Jim Kukrell, he recorded himself talking into a flip camera for 30 days. Now, the audio isn't great, but it's very, very passable. And you can. I will be doing podcasts in the future to show you how to take audio like this and clean it up so it sounds much, much better than just when it came out of a flip cam, and then remix it and, and put it up as a, uh, as a video on YouTube. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you uh, enjoyed our little episode today. I'm really excited we're going to be going to EVEX tomorrow. And I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step process of, of how, what I'm doing in the background, how I'm setting up the equipment. Because, you know, as a amateur podcaster, you're going to be curious about a lot of stuff. You, there's a lot of equipment out there that you can make mistakes and spend way too much money. You don't have to spend a lot of money to podcast about your business and get great, great broadcast quality results. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the, the next show will be coming up uh, tomorrow, and then I will be putting it on the Internet. We'll break this down into little bite-sized chunks for you. All right? We'll see you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Rick Holland for Abbotsford Small Business. Take care. Bye-bye.